warm welcome to our special program and with the rise in the coronavirus cases and with the number of deaths rising in the country, the focus now has shifted to the testing facilities, health infrastructure and the kind of research which is happening on the coronavirus. And Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is playing a lead role in this area. Joining me is Director General of CSIR, Dr. Shekhar C. Mande. I welcome you on the program. Dr. Mande, uh, my first question to you is that the world has never seen times like these. And as a scientist and as a head of the institution, uh, what do you really feel when you see the things around you at the moment? You have quite rightly pointed out that humanity has not seen a crisis of this level for a long, long, long time. Even the wars that we have gone through, World War I or World War II, were very different than the war that we are fighting right now. And the thing is that the virus actually does not distinguish between the class or religion or the skin color or the language that you speak or your nationality. It affects everyone equally. And therefore, it's the need of the hour that humanity comes together and fights the war together. Dr. Mande, how difficult uh, is, is this period as far as the research is uh, concerned? Because there is a word that there is no treatment for the coronavirus, there are no vaccines, and world over, everybody is saying the same thing. So, do you see this as some kind of an advantage for all the countries across the world? And then uh, later, of course, what India is doing and what India is focusing? From the science and technology perspective, it's a challenging issue. Not that uh, the family of viruses that coronavirus 2 belongs. It's called the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, they have been known, uh, but uh, developing a new vaccine or new, new drug is always challenging. And that's what the scientific community is actually facing that particular challenge right now. And there are sufficiently good leads that all of us have that many people around the world are working on those leads at this moment. How many countries are taking a lead as far as the development of vaccines is concerned and by when do you actually expect that the vaccine will be in the market? So there are many countries who have begun the work on the potential vaccines. For example, US has begun trials about two days ago. They take uh, patient sera, the people who have recovered, and inject it into the people who are severely affected by the disease and try to see whether that would work as an antidote. That's a good strategy that uh, they have begun. But there are some people who are actually trying to identify the surface antigen of the virus and trying to see whether the surface antigen can also be used, a purified surface antigen can be used as a vaccine. So there are multiple approaches that people have tried uh, uh, using them. Uh, what is India currently doing? And if I could ask you, what is CSIR actually doing as far as uh, the development of vaccines is concerned on coronavirus? So before we come to vaccine, if you allow me, I will talk of what CSIR strategy is. We have a five-pronged strategy that we have adopted. The first one is surveillance, including digital and molecular surveillance, okay. how people are getting affected. And we are going to develop uh, epidemiological models based on those. And we have tied up with some of the major uh, companies around the world who will bring in expertise in artificial intelligence and machine learning in developing these models. Okay, so apart from the Indian companies, you have you are opening in the companies from across the world as well. That's right. The companies like Intel Corporation and all, mm -hmm. they have already tied up with us in this particular respect. Mm -hmm. The second aspect that we are focusing on is in diagnostics. So we want to actually get into rapid diagnosis. The currently approved test in India is only the RT-PCR based, but there are other methods that are being developed. We are trying to develop them as well. The third aspect is about drugs and vaccines and there where I will come to about vaccines, what you asked me about. And there are several new therapies that people are actually trying out in both these aspects, drugs and vaccines. There's a third aspect. The fourth aspect in hospital assistive equipments, for example, uh, PPEs or the protective equipment or the ventilators or the masks and enrichment of oxygen. So these are all the scientific uh, thing that we should be working on and CSR has begun work on those. And the fifth one, which is the most important administrative aspect of it, is developing supply chain models for all of these that you can think of in each of those. So, Dr. Mande, these five uh, prongs which you are talking about as far as your digital monitoring, diagnostics, testing, supply chains, all these things are concerned. So, have you tried to connect each of these prongs with a particular corporate ABC? Or is it like uh, with all the five prongs, you're reaching out to them together? What is it like? No, actually what we have done is we approach corporates 
and some of the corporates were very generous in approaching us okay and uh, almost every corporate that we approach or they approached us we have actually designed a strategy on what the corporate strength is what our strength is and how we can leverage the two strengths together as you would be aware in scientific laboratories we can actually bring any research to a particular concept mm. but beyond moving that bio concept is how do we deploy it in the field at a large scale is the strength of any corporate so we are bringing its strengths together from both the corporate as well as scientific research organizations and together we hope that we'll be able to deal with the situation much better there is a feeling dr mande that uh, you know with the with the rise in the number of corona cases every day it's increasing and in fact in the last 5 days the increase has been phenomenal it's crossed 1000 mark now and with also the number of deaths rising but uh, my major question to you is that are we testing enough uh, in the country that's uh, a good question uh, the testing is always going to fall short at this moment because the numbers that we are going to see are in a much larger scale than what we are seeing right now and therefore we are kind of uh, having to deal with the number of testing centers and the strategy that we have adopted in csr labs is not only that different academic labs become part of the testing centers we are taking approval of icmr in this particular regard but also these testing centers start training more people so that they can test to give an example our lab in hyderabad the center for cellular and molecular biology or ccmb are now training large number of people from the uh, nearby medical colleges and primary health care centers so that this can be scaled up at a very short time okay so you mean to say that uh, at at the the secondary and the tertiary level also the health workers are being roped in and they are being taught to how to test and but what about the testing facilities because uh, training is fine training of personnel of course is an important component but uh, when you don't have that kind of an infrastructure the testing kits uh, how, how do you really deal with the situation then so that's where some of the corporates have been very generous and they have come forward and said that we will use our money in supplying these testing kits or equipments to many of the hospitals where they lack the facilities so the corporates have been very generous and have told us that you identify which hospitals and all and uh, we can actually generate those facilities even in small small hospitals uh, you just spoke a little while back about this uh, rt uh, pcr machine and the cost of this machine of course is anywhere between 10 lakh to 20 lakh now how many of these machines do we really have in india right now and uh, of course there is always a need to augment it looking at the the population of the country so how do you really channelize this uh, so that more and more machines are available right so the number of rt pcr machines in india in different scientific laboratories is my personal guess would be of the order of about 500 to 1000 this my personal across the country yes. across the country and uh, of course many hospitals wouldn't have them because they may not have uh, foreseen the need for an rt pcr in the hospitals especially the small hospitals but what we have done or some of the hospitals these machines may be there but they don't know how to use them or they may be dysfunctional or something a good example of this in calcutta the other day our lab indian institute of chemical biology in calcutta they went and donated one of the machines to the command hospital there and taught them how to use it you know because we have multiple machines in our labs and therefore we can also spread this across different hospitals by donating our machines to the hospitals okay so uh but as far as the digital monitoring is concerned uh, what is the 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 crux of the strategy as far as digital monitoring is concerned so basically what government of india has come out with a very nice strategy is that they are the, 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 the mighty they have come up with a very nice portal in which all the monitoring would take place you know so basically people who are infected who are their close contacts whom they have come in contact and all they would be monitored based on that particular aspect okay but uh, uh, dr mande when you're testing and monitoring what happens is that the ambit of testing has to be decided by the government like initially we were checking on the travel history then uh, in the second phase we we tried and uh, uh, broaden the ambit to the pneumonia patients and all the patients who are admitted with a respiratory problem so are we to understand that as and when the availability of the machines the availability of the kits increase or enhance so do we increase that uh, ambit of course the more we test the better hmm. and as you would have seen even the who uh, secretary general actually made an appeal in his initial days itself hmm. that test 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 you know right. and the testing is the one which is actually going to help us in the long term in trying to monitor how the disease is spreading and thereby how to contain it right. 
if we were to contain it, how we will actually contain it based on this testing. Uh, just a few days back, uh, WHO did make a statement that lockdown alone is not the answer until unless we are able to contain the, the second and the third phase of virus transmission. So do you see a likelihood of that uh, happening? We don't want to alarm the viewers uh, by any statement, but uh, it's just that this question is coming in the minds of the people. So what would you really have to say on this? No, lockdown is very useful in trying to break the cycle of the virus. Right? So, what government has done is extremely commendable, is announcing this particular lockdown so that people don't get into contact with each other, especially the spread of the virus, uh, that cycle if that can be broken. I think it's a very effective way of containing the infections where they are. But beyond lockdown, we also must look at scaling up of our testing and once a patient are tested uh, positive, then providing them adequate medical care in those uh, uh, procedures. I mean, that is actually very important to think about. So, lockdown also gives time to the health officials, research institutes to get more prepared for the future? Absolutely, it does. Okay. Uh, as far as the development of drugs is concerned, that's also a very important uh, aspect. And uh, you would be able to correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, there is a feeling that, there is a question rather in the minds of the people whether at all the HIV drugs are useful in the treatment of coronavirus or not. What does the research actually say and what has been your experience so far? Well, uh, it so happens that uh, some of the HIV drugs are being tested against corona, but that is because of uh, certain molecular features that HIV has might be similar to that of corona. You know, but uh, not all HIV drugs can be straight away used for Corona. Mm -hmm. That we have to realize. Uh, the drugs which are under test around the world are of uh, three or four different major categories. Okay. For example, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine is being tested in the clinics. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other drugs which are in patent, uh, remdesivir and uh, favipiravir. They are also being tested. Also, lopinavir and ritonavir, they are also being tested. And we are hoping that this test uh, clinical trials also would begin in India very soon. Apart from this, there are, of course, there are certain traditional ways of uh, plant extraction all in India, which are known to have activity against similar symptoms. And we will also get into testing of those very soon. So all this basically is in an, is in an, an empirical stage right now. That's right. Okay. But it will begin very soon. This okay. test. So a lot of things are happening as far as the research on coronavirus is concerned. We take a break at this point of time and when we return, we talk about the paper basis test which is being talked about globally and is India really vying on that test? Come back to you in a moment. When you do not like limits, when you are a seeker, a dreamer, and always questioning, what if, why not, and how, when you want to know every bit of it, when you want to explore every inch of it. DD Science, from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. every Monday to Saturday. Welcome back. You're watching our special program on the research on coronavirus. And with us is our special guest, DG CSIR, Dr. Shekhar Mande. Dr. Mande, a lot is being talked about as far as this uh, paper basis test of at Harvard is concerned. A lot of people are talking about it. How easy is it and how do you really go about uh, this test? So this test is based on uh, a very famous enzyme that many people would have heard of is called CRISPR-Cas system uh, that is being developed simultaneously at both MIT as well as the University of California, Berkeley. And uh, they are making their protocols open as is a lot of understanding across all the research organizations around the world that any research that is going on happening on Corona, we actually put it in open access so that anyone in the world can access this. Okay. And the paper-based test that we talked about is based on that CRISPR-Cas system. Our institute in Delhi the Institute of Genomics and Integrity of Biology, they are trying to develop this particular test and we are trying to see what is the sensitivity and specificity and how quickly and how cheaply we can actually implement this particular test. So this institute in Delhi basically is going on the lines of the Harvard test only which is being done. Similar way. The similar... Similar way but the CRISPR that the institute has, our Delhi institute, is more specific for certain targets. So we are actually trying to use our enzyme for that. 
But in times like these, uh, Dr. Mande, what has been your experience? Like what you said that, you know, the entire research on coronavirus is very open and transparent. But uh, sometimes, you know, because of uh, the geopolitical relations and sometimes strategic relations, what if a country doesn't get too transparent in times like these? And uh, maybe if one country is out there to develop some vaccine and uh, they hide from one particular country. It's just a very layman's question which came to my mind, so I thought I'll ask you. I think if anyone does that, I would consider that as a regressive step. Okay. Because uh, this is a time that humanity has never seen before. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's important that entire humanity joins together in a war against Corona. And therefore, it's imperative that everyone, whatever research that is being done, places in an open access that anyone else can see it. And you never know that different people of different academic backgrounds can actually bring a lot of value. So if one person puts in open access, the other person can actually bring value in doing it much better. And we don't have much time and therefore it's important that everybody places all the research that is happening in open access system so that anyone around the world can use it and make it better. But as far as this uh, paper basis test is concerned, uh, you already said that uh, the institutes in Delhi and Hyderabad are already doing it, or they're in the process of doing it. So by when do you really expect the tests to get through and uh, we see it happening quick and fast? We are hoping that in the next few weeks, the test would be optimized. And as soon as the test is optimized and we get proper parameters, as I said, for sensitivity and specificity, then we will actually convey to ICMR that this test is as good as the RT-PCR and they can independently verify whether what we are saying is right or wrong and then ICMR's call whether it can be implemented in the field. But when you talk about the test, Dr. Mande, everything boils down to the cost, that how expensive is the test going to be? So are we going in for a model where uh, people can just walk into a clinic or a hospital and get themselves freely tested or will they have to make a choice that, okay, you have to pay 100 or 200 or 500 and then you get tested? What is it going to be like? Now, ideally, any test should be such that should be rapid and it should be easily accessible, that is the cost should be very cheap. And both these parameters actually we are trying to see whether we can achieve them in this paper-based test. At the same time, we should not compromise on the sensitivity or specificity. You know, it would be catastrophic if a person is positive and you tell the person that you are not positive for coronavirus. That will be a catastrophe. Or the other way that you would actually have the panic set in where people who don't have corona, but you tell them that you have corona. So either way, it should not be right. And therefore, all these three parameters, that is the test should be rapid, the test should be accessible financially to a large population, and a third, that we don't compromise on the accuracy of the test. All these three parameters we'll consider in uh, implementing. But for the middle class Indian, maybe they would, uh, they would afford a cheaper uh, cost, you know, as far as the test is concerned. But we do have a large population of, uh, say, poor people, people below, be living below the poverty line, migrant laborers, all sorts of people are there. So for them, is it government? Is the government really going to target uh, some, some category of a test which is going to be freely available to them? Uh, are you looking at something like that? I think that is government's call to take. Okay. And ICMR is pretty competent organization. They would be looking at many different kinds of tests in the basket that come in. And ICMR would eventually take a call uh, in the largest public interest of which of these are better, which of these are not better. And probably would recommend to the government what the course of action should be. Right. Uh, coming to the assistance to the hospitals and to the general uh, public at large, uh, the most uh, often heard complaint amongst the people and amongst the healthcare workers has been that there are no enough uh, personal protective equipment, masks are not available, gloves are not available, ventilators, uh, respiratory machines. So how do you make that available? Of course, a, a huge package has been announced by the government, a 15,000 crore package and still lots more to come. But how do you make it available so that it comes in the hands of the doctors, the healthcare workers and the people ra rapidly and steadily? It's a very important point and I must applaud the response of our industry. All the major industrialists in the country, and I don't want to name here because that would seem I'm taking only preferential names, but all the major industrialists in the country have come forward and said that they would do whatever it takes in uh, meeting the shortfall of any of this equipment or protective gear and whatever. And not only they have actually said that we will do it, they have started working on it. So we must applaud our industry that they have come forward in this uh, moment of time. 
the Kishore Vaigyanik Protsahan Yojana Fellowships provide students with a monthly stipend of rupees 5000 during their undergraduation and rupees 7000 during their post graduation along with the monthly fellowship they are also entitled to receive a contingency grant that can be spent on consumables like laptops books and stationery The objective of the KVPY fellowship is to identify students with talent and aptitude for research, help them realize their academic potential, encourage them to take up research career in science and ensure the growth of the best scientific minds for research and development in the country. DD Science showcases okay, the latest achievements of Indian scientific research organizations and universities. DD Science will make science education accessible to all and will inspire youth towards scientific research and innovation. DD Science will spread scientific temperament and rational thinking. DD Science will open your eyes and blow your mind. What others call fiction, we call a possibility. When others accept, we challenge. DD Science. Welcome back you're watching our special program on the research on coronavirus and with us is our special guest DG CSIR Dr Shekhar Mande We've uh, seen visuals of uh, you know the tribal women uh, wearing a mask uh, made with the leaves and a lot of experiment is being done in the villages uh, so are we trying to open these self help groups at the village level at the rural level so that you know uh, they can have alternative means of making a mask or making a hand sanitizer even the prime minister has uh, spoken about these things absolutely see what we are seeing also witnessing is one fact that people migrating from cities to villages back is one of the unexpected thing that actually happened uh, in this time of crisis and what csr would like to see is how do we support people when they go back to villages can we actually promote rural entrepreneurship out of these and uh, we would like to actually take undertake work with the help of ngos whether we can teach people how to make sanitizers in villages whether we can teach people how to make masks in the villages and so on so forth so whatever technology we have on our board we are actually going to try to work with ngos and try to see whether we can start teaching people in the villages to make on their own so has this process begun and any particular villages maybe in the first phase or the second phase you're going to look at or it's going to start from a particular pocket of the country how how is it going to be like we have just started talking to the ngos some of the large ngos in the country uh -huh. and uh, they have come forward and we are just discussing with them how do we quickly implement this particular thing with them okay. so the initial discussions have just begun it will probably take another week or so to start implementing and teaching villagers on how to create their sanitizers their masks and so on and so forth uh, one last bit uh, dr mande before uh, we wind up the show uh, is uh, the supply chain that how do these things whether it is ventilators whether it is respiratory machines or whether it is uh, ppes gloves how do they reach the chemist shop and how do they reach uh, the doctor so what is the kind of uh, supply chain model which you have thought about or you have collaborated with the corporates so supply chain model is an extraordinarily important issue in the entire mitigation process we start with raw material being available in particular locations those raw materials being used for manufacturing particular kind of equipments say gloves or protective gear or whatever or even ventilators or medicines or whichever and then a supply from the manufacturing side to the uh, either the medical shops or whatever and then from there giving to the public so the entire chain which starts from raw material to the public is a very important aspect and that should be available in different corners of the country the supply chain model is being now worked out by our laboratories uh, principally indians of petroleum in dehradun in collaboration with one of the large software companies in the country and they are working it out together and we hope to implement it very soon for each of the thing that is required for mitigation say gloves sanitizers ventilators medicines vaccine diagnostic tests for each of these there has to be a supply chain model and our lab in dehradun in collaboration with a sofia major is trying to develop this model so what would you tell the people towards the end uh, because we've seen a lot of panic buying 
uh, people stocking up sanitizers, stocking up gloves, and then suddenly we see a shortfall in the market. What would you really tell the people uh, at the moment? Of course, what you've assured us is that uh, there's going to be no shortage in future. But uh, any last word from you for the audience who's going to watch this program? I would just appeal to the audience not to panic. Follow uh, basic uh, hygiene that the government recommends. Government has come up with very strong recommendations on how to protect yourself against this particular disease. Maintain social distance and wash your hands with soap for about 20 seconds. And please keep watching out for the guidelines that the government issues from time to time. Uh, government is here to protect you and you are here to protect yourself. So uh, please do that and I'm sure we'll win the war against this dreaded disease. So as Dr. Mande has uh, assured that you need to respect the hygiene, you need to uh, follow the social distancing and keep following, of course, the government guidelines. So uh, give us your comments and suggestions as to what you felt about the program. There's an email ID flashing on your screen. You can write to us if you have a particular recommendation for an interview or for some kind of a panel discussion which you want on this platform. From me here, goodbye. Mm -hmm.